Some notes about what I'm focusing on when I'm laying out my tabletop. So for me, the most critical part is what is the top gonna look like? Especially in this scenario, because this is gonna have a breadboard end, alternating the grain isn't as critical, or at least from my perspective. So my main focus is what the top is gonna look like. But just to look at the end grain here, you can see we have the smile, frown, smile. So those three boards alternate. We have a back-to-back -back here. You know, these three in a row are identical, but we have an alternation, you know, alternating set of boards right here. So not bad. Again, not as critical, or at least from my perspective, because it's gonna have the breadboard on each end. So from there, if you were to look at the underside of this tabletop, there'd be a lot of sapwood. So I was trying to lim limit the blonde streaking just for a more consistent hardwood tabletop. And then a couple of the boards just have a slight cup to them like this one. You can see there it's not laying perfectly flat as well as this one. So this board and this board just have a slight cup to them. So ideally I want that cup to be up and uh, that was able to work out this way. Now again, these other boards will help flatten that out over time. Uh, we'll help flatten that out and then I prefer the cup up because just over time, gravity um, will help flatten that as well. So the last thing I have to consider, this tabletop is about three inches wider than the final width. So I want my edges to have as much hardwood as possible for this table. So these sets of uh, blonde areas, the sapwood areas, are actually, when I trim off about an inch and a half, gonna eliminate most of this blonde streaking and really the same thing on this side. Most of that blonde streaking, this one doesn't have as much down there, will be reduced. So again, those are the things I look at when I'm, or consider when I'm laying on my tabletop. So the last part here, or the next part, is gluing this up. So I'm gonna glue this up in three smaller sections, just the way the board's laid out. I just don't have enough width on my planer to accommodate two big sections. So that'll be the next part here. Joining these together with the domino joiner, gluing them up in three smaller sections, and then planing those three sections before I do the large glue up. So ultimately that'll just leave me with, in this case, two seams that'll need sanded.
Right now at this point, I have all of the tenons set and the holes drilled for the dowels. So getting to this point, the layout for the dowels here. So on these boards right here, these two and these two, the dowels are centered. The one in the very middle, I have seven boards here that make up this tabletop. The board in the very middle gets two dowels and these will get glued. So this board will actually get glued here. Um, none of the other boards get glued and that allows them to move uh, with seasonal movement. And these holes on the ends are one and three quarters of an inch from the outside edge. Now this board is oversized as well as this tabletop, but when everything's cut the width, this will be one and three quarters of an inch from the edge. And these are 23 64 of an inch. So just a 64th inch of light from a 3 8 inch hole. So the dowel will be 3 8 of an inch. These are drilled at 23 64 And then they go about a quarter inch from the bottom here. So this is about one and three quarters of an inch thick. And I drill into this board about an inch and a half. So on the tenons here, when mortising these, these are, and you're doing a 70 millimeter deep mortise, so these go into the ends here, 70 millimeters. You end up with a lot of sawdust still in there, even if you have your vac system hooked up. So I always make sure to vacuum these voids as well as I just dump this over and get all the sawdust out of here. So you want to make sure your openings, your mortises are um, clear of any sawdust. And that'll ensure that when you go to hammer these in, these tenons, that they can seat all the way, that they can slide in to that full opening, into that full mortise. And that just ensures that they're not sticking out too far and eliminates any risk of this board not being able to slide in because these aren't in deep enough. So the next step here is gonna be putting this breadboard on the end and finding my hole location for the dowels. So another reason it's beneficial to have this oversized longer than you need, when you go to take this uh, when you go to put this breadboard on, as I'm doing now, it gives you some area to hit this. Now, you could clamp or glue or tape a scrap piece to the backside here, but I just make sure I'm hitting on the very ends because I'm going to be cutting off almost three inches of this material here. So, again, the extra length is beneficial for a couple reasons. That's one of them. Okay, my breadboard is clamped to the tabletop here, and I clamp it because I wanna ensure that this breadboard is as tight as possible to the ends of the tabletop here when I go to reference for my dowels. So I'm gonna take a 5 16 inch brad point uh, drill bit, and I'm just gonna use that to find the centers. Now again, these holes are 23 64 this is 2064, so obviously this is not the same diameter. Uh, it's a little bit smaller, but I prefer that uh, because when you go to make these marks, you actually don't want them centered. You want them slightly forward of center. You want them a little bit closer to the actual tabletop. And I'll explain that further when we get to it, but essentially that's gonna help pull all of this tight when we go to hammer our dowels in. So what I do is I take this bit and I put it as tight to the front of this hole as possible. And you really want to make sure you're vertical here. And then just a little tap and I got my mark. And I'll just go ahead and do that along. Um, I'll go ahead and do that for all of these dowels. 
Another reason you want this breadboard longer than needed is removing it. So this will make it much easier now to get this back off. It'll give me a hammer point. So this is one of the tenons for the very center board. And for these tenons that are in the center board, the two of them that are located there, I use the 23 64 inch bit. So the same diameter bit, I drilled my breadboard into my breadboard end. I'm gonna drill into the tenon for the center board. So this mark here should be slightly forward to center. And I'm just gonna cheat even a little bit more when I go ahead and place my drill bit just a little bit closer to the tabletop. Okay, so my two holes are drilled in the center board and the tenons for the center board. And now I'm gonna do the other uh, tenons, the other holes for the other six tenons. And these ones now I'm gonna switch over, back over to a five sixteenths inch drill bit, back over to that brad point. And again, I'm gonna come just slightly forward of this mark and now these holes need elongated and that'll allow this table to slide. So I drill my hole and now I'm just gonna rock my drill bit from side to side to start elongating this. Next, I'll clean this up. I wanna just eliminate anything that could possibly get in the way when I slide this breadboard on. My dowels are all cut to length. They're about an inch and five eighths. And now I'm gonna put a slight taper like this one has on the end of each of them. Okay, here's what one of the dowels looks like and you can see, trying to show it there, the tenon sticking at the bottom of the hole. And you can see it's sticking into the hole a little bit. And that's, that's what you're looking for. So when this dowel gets hammered in, when we hammer this dowel into this hole now, it's gonna pull because that opening is set forward a little bit. It's gonna pull this breadboard closer to the tabletop. So just a reminder, this center board is glue. You might even be able to pick up the glue squeeze out here. And these two dowels will get glued as well, the entire length of the dowel. Now again, it's a really fine line between how far set forward that opening is compared to your dowel opening. If you just need to set forward just slightly, so for example, this one I'm about to do first is actually set forward too far. So I'm just gonna, it's not a big deal, I'm just gonna drill a little bit more of the material out and just create a little bit uh, bigger void. Because if that opening is too narrow, even with this tapered end, you're not gonna be able to get this dowel through there.
So it is a really fine line. This dowel didn't set as smoothly as I'd like, uh, but it happens, so not a big deal. Again, it's on the center board. These really aren't doing much because this is glued together anyways. That one set a lot better. So I'm not even sure you, if you could pick it up, it's probably getting blocked here, but this actually pulled it even tighter than the clamp here. Um, you know, I could crank down this clamp a little more, but this, this one set a lot better than that one. So I'll just cut them close to the surface with this uh, dovetail saw here. You could use a flush cut saw, it doesn't matter. Um, and then I just hit it with a little hand plane. And now we'll just continue that process for the rest of these. So now on these openings that are slotted, these three and these three, the dowels get hammered in and about the last third you put some glue and that just holds the dowel into the top of the breadboard. Again, that one set nicely, and one of the ways I can tell it did, just the smoothness of how it went in, there wasn't too much resistance, and then I have about a quarter inch of this dowel sticking out, so I know it's seated all the way. Everything's finished, so now the real test here is when you remove the clamps, does everything hold tight? And so that's a good sign. When I release this one on the outside, this gap stayed just as tight. Same thing in the middle. Okay, so that's what you're looking for. And then also, if you look on the underside, it should be tight as well, so that that means your breadboard's not tipped, and that means that the top is not just pulling tight, and if you look from the side as well. So if the side is snug and underneath and nothing moved when you release the clamps, that's the ideal situation, that's what you're looking for. Let's look at a close-up of this. It was probably hard to see real well from that far away. And this is about 45 inches wide, and. It is difficult to get this perfect. You know, you can see right here, a little hairline gap. But once this is sanded, this is even gonna look better. And I'm really happy with these results. Again, another little hairline gap there. And at the end, not concerned about that. That's actually getting cut off when this gets cut to the final width. Both breadboards are attached. The reason I use breadboards, it hides the end grain of the planks and it also helps to keep the tabletop flat over time. So with a table this big, I always struggle with what's an acceptable level of flatness. And I have my level on here, my six foot level and it's just slightly uh, dipping at the end. It has just a slight hump um, across the middle here. But if anything, I would pref actually prefer that. Uh, so over time, if this settles or as it does settle, it's gonna settle itself to flat. So if anything, I prefer the hump to go from side to side to be up. And if there's any uh, from end to end, I prefer that to be up as well. Um, so the next part here is going to be to cut this tabletop to width 
and then start working on the base.